this here, this is really the only table that has like any amount of Lego stacked on it. But a lot of this stuff isn't that old other than this Lone Ranger set right here. But I don't know if I want to spend 125 on it. Warbird. All I want is Warbird. I don't care about Cab. I don't care about Radioactive Man. I just want Ms. Marvel, but I don't want to spend 150 for a three pack. But I can't find her so separate anywhere. Hey everybody, Mac here. Welcome back to the show. As of the time of this recording, we just got back in from the Philly area. We were, of course, out there in Oaks, PA for RetroCon this past weekend. Spent the weekend out there, spent the weekend at RetroCon, had a really good time. Was not as big or grandiose as it usually is, but then what else would you expect given the climate of the room right now with the pandemic and everything going on? Weren't nearly as many guests there. The 501st and The Finest were there, but they didn't have nearly as much uh, as many people there as there usually are. But like I said, you kind of expect things like this. I even talked to some of the vendors that were there, and they said they've only been back on the circuit for about two months. And they all agreed that, like, right now the conventions are going on, but they're a little off as to what they usually are. But we all agreed that we would rather have a convention that's a little off rather than no convention at all. So what we have to look at right now is some of the swag that I picked up while I was out there this weekend. Now what you're going to notice is there's not a whole lot of like vintage or retro stuff that we're going to be taking a look at because for the most part a lot of the vendors had basically retail product on their tables. Marvel Legends, Star Wars Black Series, G.I. Joe Classified, things like that. Basically all of the stuff that's really popular and some of the stuff that's really hard to find right now. And what was there for, like, vintage toys was a little higher in price than what I was really looking to spend. But I did find some stuff, some stuff that I was looking for, and some stuff that I just happened to see. So we're going to start with this one. This is the Marvel Legends Psylocke from the Nimrod uh, box set that I've been wanting a Psylocke because I'm collecting basically, like, ninja-style figures to, like, pad out the Cobra and Joe ninja teams, and I've been wanting a Psylocke. I can't find Psylocke in her in her classic purple gear, but I really like the, the black outfit for the Nimrod look, but I didn't want Nimrod, and there was a vendor there that had Psylocke in the bag, and was selling her at a really good price, actually. And she has all of her accessories. So this was one that I picked up that was kind of like a surprise that I wasn't expecting to find. But I was really glad that I did. Look at... Love the coloring of her hair. I think their hair on this one is a darker purple than the one that comes in, like, her uh, traditional garb, her traditional color. So I like, I like the look... I like the black outfit. Don't read many X-Men. Haven't read much X-Men since the 90s. Don't know if this is actually an official look for her, if this was just something that they came up with the Nimrod pack, but I dig it. She also has all of her accessories, her katana, her psychic effect that just goes around the blade, like so. Really like the effect. Really like the color of the effect. Not a big fan of... The purple katana, I understand the whole thing is supposed to be her psychic projection, but I may end up painting this like a more traditional color with a silver blade and a black handle. And then whenever this goes on, if I use this and put this on, I feel like it'll just stand out and pop more instead of getting lost and blending into the the sword as it is. Plus you have her... Uh, uh, psychic Dagger, what do they call this now? Focus Totality, I think. And she has her butterfly, <laughs> her psychic butterfly effect. And she does have, she has this fist and she has this gripping hand. Where's it at? She does have another 
grip hand. What did I do with it? One second. Okay, yeah, here we go. She has this other gripping hand that you can replace her fist with, so that if you do get another melee weapon once I paint the katana, she could dual wield. But she also uses the clenched fist for her focus totality, that it just fits in like that. And then it just pops on her wrist. So she has that. And then her psychic katana, and she's ready to rock. <laughs> I really like this. Like, for having a single jointed elbow, she gets some great travel in there. Hinge and swivel. No butterfly joint. Really comes up high, though. Great movement in the head, especially for having this long mane of hair. This is real rubber. It's real soft, so it doesn't really get in the way. Waist twist. Kicks. Not so great for a ninja-type character, but what can you do? Really like this figure. Really glad I found her. Gonna look good next to Snake Eyes. Definitely. Maybe even... Ooh, maybe I could even convert her over to Dawn. If anybody reads the, uh, the current run of G.I. Joe, could turn her into Dawn, maybe. That would be cool. So put that over here. here. This, I had no idea what this was when I found this. All I know was it looked awesome, and they were selling it for $10. So I had to get this. The guy I bought it off of told me that this is from, let me reposition the camera, that this is from Final Fantasy XIII, and truthfully, I've never played Final Fantasy XIII. I've played Final Fantasy I, II, and Seven, and that's about it. But I totally believe that this is something that came from Square Enix or Final Fantasy. It has that blend of, like, medieval knight and a little bit of samurai aesthetic thrown in there, too. This knee pad is a little loose. It keeps on moving. But you can see there's, there's pegs and peg holes in there that... You just got to get it to snap back in there. And look at the helmet. Look at the detail on this. I have no idea who makes this. I have no idea when this was from. Even the cape on back. The detail, the design on the cape. Anybody who has this, anybody that knows anything about this, please let me know in the comments below. This is really cool. Like I said, I don't know much about this, where it's from, who he even is. All I know is... It's going to look great next to my Geralt, next to uh, the, the McFarlane Witcher series. He has these big hork and swords here. And one thing that I really like... Whoop, stand up here, buddy. Uh, this is the first time I've tried to stand him, I think, since I got him. But one thing that I liked was, first off, look at the weapon. Once again, that is definitely... Definitely a Square Enix Final Fantasy style weapon, but you can see it has these pegs down here and his hands While they're not like tight gripping hands You can see that his hands have peg holes in them that you just slip it in Oh, oh no uh, Ah, ah, I broke it live on camera Ask some super glue will take care of that <laughs> But you just basically twist it into his palm, and then he would hold it there. Oh, that's a bummer. But I got super glue. It broke at just the right spot that once I glue that in there, you won't be able to see it. But he also has this removable hand. Because this hand is gripping another weapon, and that's just pegged in there as well. But you see, you have to take the gauntlet off. It attaches to the peg. And then you slip it right back on. Like so. And then it's real soft and just goes right back into place. And then he would be dual wielding these two big, horkin, very anime style weapons. Let me see. Yeah, I just got to glue that back on. Give me one second. Okay, here we go. A little bit of craggle and a few minutes, and it works wonders. It's just like new. I'm not going to move them around too much because I think it hasn't fully set yet. But you can see it's going to dry, and the whole thing is going to look fantastic. And something that I just found out, 
I mistakenly thought this was a 7-inch figure when I bought him. Here is the McFarlane Toys Geralt of Rivia right next to him. And you can see he's probably at least an 8 or maybe even a 9-inch tall figure. Which is even better because I wanted him as like some Death Knight villain for Geralt to do battle with. And the fact that he is so much bigger just adds to the menace. And I really love that. So, there we go. Like I said, I was told he's from Final Fantasy XIII. I don't know what his name is. If anybody knows, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think of this guy. I think this is a beautiful, beautiful figure. Now let's just gently move him back there with Psylocke. Get her, get all the extra hands and accessories and the baggie out of the way. And what do we have next? Next up is something that I was looking for. And this is the Marvel Legends Thor 80th Anniversary. I wanted this figure for a number of reasons. One, because this is the classic Thor look. This is the Thor, this is the look Thor had when I was reading comics. Even the logo on the box is the same as the logo when I was reading comics. And I just love this look. To me, this look is Thor at his peak. I love it. But I also like how for this 80th anniversary, it actually has the saying carved into Mjolnir. Whoever holds this hammer, if he be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. I'm sorry, if if they, if the, uh, whoever holds this hammer, if he be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. Yeah, so I really like the look. I like the bulk of the figure. And if you remember, when I did the Loki review, I have the comic uh, that was the first The Mighty Thor comic. And I'm sort of building a display around that comic with the Marvel Legends figures. I have Loki. I have the... Uh, the 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 eighty style Hercules from Hasbro Pulse on pre order. I needed this, and I have a couple of other Marvel Legends Thor figures to build around it. But it wasn't going to be complete without this Thor because I knew this was the one that I had wanted. So I found that for a really good price at RetroCon, and I was really happy to find that. Another one that I was act actively looking for was Jaina Solo. I don't have very many Star Wars Black figures, Black Series figures. As a matter of fact, the only ones that I pick up are some of the ones that just mean something to me. Like, I don't have any of the original trilogy figures because I had vintage figures of all of those when, during the Kenner days. But I picked up Ahsoka, which I did a review on her, if you remember that. I'm also getting the Knights of the Old Republic figures, the series of the Knights of the Old Republic. I might start delving into just Sith Lords in general, but I wanted Ahsoka. I'm, I'm sorry, I wanted Jaina really bad. Um, I loved this character in the books. Um, I believe her call sign was Styx because she had the lightsaber plus the control yoke of the X-Wing. And, I mean, it's a solo. It's, it's Jaina. I was really upset when they did away with the EU, and that meant Jaina didn't exist anymore, but now I have her. Now she's part of my collection, and she will exist forever on the shelf. Last but not least, like I said, I didn't really pick up anything vintage, but this I had to get. I have never had a Mezco 112 figure, and I always said that if I saw the Wonder Woman figure, especially this one, I was going to pick it up because this isn't the Wonder Woman uh, 2017 or the Wonder Woman 84 Gal Gadot likeness. This is Wonder Woman in all of her glory. The shield, the sword, the spear, the axe, the different heads, the armor. I've never had a Mezco figure. I can't wait to get this one open. I'm probably going to end up doing a full review on this one just to open it up. And the reason I picked this up, the only thing that was stopping me from buying this was I'm not all about spending $100 on an action figure. That, to me, that just, that's not fun. That doesn't say toy. I'll, I'll, I'll go close to it, but like, this was 100 bucks when it was up for sale. The, the vendor that was selling these had like five of these behind a shelf, and he was selling them for a really good price. And I mean like a really good price. The type of price that it was like, if I don't get it now, I'm never going to get it for this price again. So I snagged it. I grabbed it. I can't wait to open this up. I can't wait to show it to you. I can't wait to actually see and 
well play with my first Mezco 112 figure. I've heard great things about them. I'm definitely going to be looking forward to getting that one open. Let's make some space back here. Something else that I typically get into when I go to RetroCon is picking up some art from the art vendors that were there. And unfortunately, this year, there weren't a whole lot of art vendors. There were definitely fewer there this year than there have been. And this first piece that, I'm, that we're looking at arguably isn't even from an artist. This is from The Finest, which The Finest is a... It's sort of to G.I. Joe what the 501st is to Star Wars. It's a G.I. Joe cosplay society, if you don't know who they are. And whenever you do a donation to them, you had your choice of Baroness, Scarlet, and I think Snake Eyes was the other one. But if you know me, you know I am a big Baroness fanboy. And <laughs> Cobra Intelligence Division has the finest down here, Strength Through Intelligence. I love that the look, the, the, the armor, the leather is her vintage look. She's dual wielding 45s and you can see the sniper rifle strapped to her back. I actually love this. This is like, this is like peak Baroness right here. I'll put up a photo of this uh, to get a full screenshot of it, but I will also put a link to the Finest's website down in the description below. I don't know if you can do like an online donation and get one of these mailed to you or not, but it's worth it just to check them out. I believe they have even like um, pictures of the people involved in the branch in your area. And they even have each uh, cosplayer even has their own trading card that they give away for free at the conventions. And I grabbed some last year. I forgot to grab some this year. I don't think they had any new ones, though. I think, I think I pretty much grabbed all of the trading cards that they had to offer. But yeah, definitely check them out. Link in the description below. Next up, we have something from Geek Boy Press that I bought something off of them last year. I bought a Rory and Amy from Doctor Who. This year, he had this print of Wonder Woman that I really liked. I just really like his style. This, like, soft, quasi-anime, big-eyed, just happy, bright. I really like the look of his art style. Once again, I will put a link to his Instagram in the description below. Definitely check him out. He has a lot of work. He, he does some really good, good work. And once again, I will put a full, full picture um, up on the screen for you so you can see this all at once. But I really wanted to get this Wonder Woman. Like I said, last year, or in a 2019 rather, I got some Doctor Who, and I got another print from him. I can't remember what it was, but when I saw this Wonder Woman, I knew I wanted this. And yeah, I really like this. He has all different kinds of sizes. I think this is the biggest one that he makes this size. And he has t-shirts, he has buttons, he has enamel pins, coasters. He has a whole bunch of stuff, so go ahead and check him out. And finally, while it's arguably not art, they did have a cosplayer there, Monica Tulane. Or, yeah, and uh, we'll put a description to her Instagram in the description below, along with everything else. She's there every year. And I've talked to her before, and she does some really good Supergirl. She has a bunch of different looks for Supergirl. This is the 70s look. They also had the CW look. They had the Rebirth with the crop top look. Crisis on Infinite Earths. Just a bunch of different looks for Supergirl. I wanted to get this one because nobody really does the 70s look with the shorts and the vest. And she even has, like, the choker necklace on underneath the, the cape right here. And look how the cape just sort of, like, double wraps around her neck. The other thing is, is that she actually makes all of this stuff. And if you just take a look at those boots, like, just imagine she makes that stuff. And that's pretty impressive. She wrote a book. She's there every year. I talk to her every year. And I didn't get something last year, but she sells these 8x10s and just signs them off. So I thought that was worth getting. She does some really good stuff. Link to her Instagram in the description below. And then I ended up with this. I do not collect Masters of the Universe classics, I, or rather Masters of the Universe Origins, and yet I ended up with a flocked panther. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. 
I don't know if I'm going to keep this. I don't know if I'm going to sell this on the Etsy store. I don't know if I'm going to use this as a giveaway. But I know the flocked version of Panthor has been hard to find. So I kind of want to make sure this gets in the hands of an actual collector, somebody that would appreciate it. For me, it would basically just sit on a shelf in this box, never come out. And while I think it's cool, it's just not something that I collect. Although I do have to say, look at the art on this. The artwork is fantastic. Masters of the Universe, whether it's Mega Constructs, whether it's Origins, whatever it is, always looks great. I love this with uh, Screech in the background, which makes me think that eventually Screech is going to come out for Origins. And also right here, I love that they have Tila on her unicorn. And it would be really cool with everything Origins is doing, or maybe even the Masterverse line, if they finally brought out Tila's unicorn, that would be great. But also, if you flip it over and you take a look on the back here, once again, this, this classic style artwork... Masters has always had great artwork, and I love how they have him in the the battle armor versions on the back of the cats on the back here. And on the cross cell, you can see everything else that came out with this wave. So yeah, I don't know if I'm going to keep this. I don't know if I'm going to sell this. I don't know if I'm going to do it as a giveaway. If I did, if I did do a giveaway, how many actually need him? How many want him? Let me know in the comments below. Maybe that will influence my decision of what to do with Panthor. Let's make some room, get him back there, Thor goes up top, and finally, while this isn't something that I got at RetroCon, nor is this something I'm going to give away, when I came home from RetroCon, this was waiting on the shelf for me, G.I. Joe Classified Snake Eyes Origins Baroness, and I only ordered three of these figures. Storm Shadow, which we already took a look at, Baroness right here, and I'm waiting on Scarlet. Akiko and Scarlet, I think, are the only two that out, aren't out yet. And what was... I don't know if it's funny, I don't know if it's amusing, I don't know what to think of it, but you know you haven't seen any G.I. Joe Classified on the shelves at all, whether it's Target or whether it's Walmart. On the way home from RetroCon... I stopped off at Walmart to pick up some stuff before I got home, and they had stocked the shelves with the Snake Eyes Origins classified figures, and the shelves were overloaded with Storm Shadow, Snake Eyes, and Baroness, so much to the point that it was kind of encroaching on the Marvel Legends display. I don't think the movie figures are selling as well as Hasbro had hoped. I picked up Storm Shadow because I wanted a Storm Shadow in a completely white outfit, which we saw it's not really stark white, it's like a dirty eggshell white. I picked up Scarlet because I'm hoping that the face sculpt on Scarlet actually looks like an adult instead of a teenager. That was That's one of my big main complaints of the first classified figure of Scarlet, whether we're talking about the original or the redeco. The, the face just looks way too young, too kiddish, too anime. I don't know. Just, the face is just off. I'm hoping the Snake Eyes Scarlet looks better. And I got the Baroness because I put this order in before I found out I was going to be able to get the Target Cobra Island Baroness with the coil. And then even after I got that, I was like, well, it's the Baroness. I'm going to get her anyway. Let's just see how she looks. So we'll probably be doing a review on this maybe this coming weekend. But yeah. I got the Baroness now. So, that's that's what I got. That's what we have. That was my experience at RetroCon. By the way, I also noticed that while I was gone, I broke 700 subscribers. So, thank you very much for that. So, we'll definitely be taking a look at Wonder Woman. We'll definitely be... We'll probably be taking a look at Thor. Maybe Jaina. And we will be taking a look at the Baroness. So... Until we take a look at all of that, play well everyone, stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, thank you for watching.